a fresh start. That's all Evan Powell wants as he, along with his mother and sister, flee from California to Haddington, Virginia, hoping to keep his father's notoriety a secret. But Haddington is a Southern town steeped in tradition and moving to a place immersed in the past has its own price. Although Evan quickly makes friends, one boy, Brady Griggs, seems determined to make sure that as a Chinese American, Evan feels that he does not belong. When Evan finds a unique way to make himself part of the school's annual Civil War celebration, the reaction is swift and violent. As all of his choices at home and at school collide, Evan must decide whether he will react with the same cruelty shown to him or choose a different path. For First Chapter Friday, here is The Secret Battle of Evan Pao by Wendy Wenlong Shang. When they reached Virginia, their 10th and final state, Evan took out the three Jolly Ranchers he'd been carefully saving since Indiana and passed them out, sour apple for mom and himself, cherry for Celeste. To celebrate making it to Virginia, he announced, it had been hard to save the last bit of candy, but it was worth it. They'd been in the car so long that any little new thing felt like relief. He popped the candy into his mouth, letting the sweetness spread over his tongue. We're not in Kansas anymore, quipped Celeste as she unwrapped the candy. Technically speaking, we never went through Kansas, said Evan. We did, however, go through Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana. Evan had designated himself the navigator for the trip. He liked knowing where they were, what was coming. He traced his fingers along the route. It's a quote from the Wizard of Oz, said Celeste. The moment when Dorothy goes outside after a tornado and discovers Oz, the point is she's not home. Kansas is beside the point. She pulled on a strand of hair, already bored by her own explanation. Evan tried to switch to sitting cross-legged, which necessitated moving an old box of French fries and not spilling his water. For a while, it felt like the car was a spaceship and they were adventurers making their way across the country, watching the landscape change shape and color. Spring looked different everywhere, but Evan had to admit that spring in Virginia was the prettiest with green grass and trees blooming with pink and white flowers. Old movies are weird, said Evan. The candy clacked around his mouth as he talked. He didn't really think that. He just wanted Celeste to put her phone down and talk to him. It's a classic, said Celeste. Everyone should see it. There are so many references to it. The Wicked Witch, the Tin Man Without a Heart. Being three years older, Celeste had a lot of opinions on things everyone should know or do or think. It's not as important as Star Wars, though, argued Evan. The Force, Darth Vader, Jedi. During the course of the trip, they had argued over the best Marvel movie, the tastiest pasta shape, the right way to tie a shoe, and whether cats were smarter than dogs. Mom sighed. Almost there, guys. It was her way of saying, don't start fighting. We're almost at the end. It's almost the beginning, too, Evan thought. He wasn't sure if he felt happy or nervous about that. He pressed his face against the window. Tree, house, tree, house, roadside stand. They passed a house with a girl throwing a frisbee to a black and white dog. At least Dorothy had a dog, he said. Mom sighed. 
You know that things have just been too unsettled to get a dog. Evan disagreed. It was always a good time to get a dog. Maybe you needed a dog the most when things were down. You mean dad taking off and us moving all the way across the country to a town where we know exactly one person? That kind of unsettled, said Celeste. Or did you mean something else? That would be it, said mom quietly. From the back seat, Evan watched his mom's shoulders hunch over. He nudged Celeste and tilted his head toward mom. Sorry, said Celeste. They had an unspoken agreement not to talk about dad, but sometimes it just popped up like a ball being held underwater. We'll be okay, said Evan. We'll un unsettle, he paused, and then we'll get a dog. Hope springs eternal for Evan, said mom. She shifted in her seat, trying to find a way to be comfortable. At least when it comes to dogs, said Evan. They stopped at a gas station. Mom said it should be the last fill up they needed. A man came out of the store and cocked his head sideways at them, watching them stumble out of the car to stretch and get the feeling of the earth beneath them again. You folks lost, he asked. There wasn't any particular concern in his voice. It was more like amusement, Evan thought. We're fine, said mom, just need some gas. She unhooked the nozzle and stuck it into the car. The man took a couple steps toward them. I heard your tires when you came in, said the man. Might be something wrong with your alignment. You ought to get him checked out. He jerked his head toward the garage. I got a free bay. I could run your car up on the rack for you. Mom hesitated. Dad usually took care of car maintenance. Had taken care of car maintenance. If your car's out of alignment and you keep driving, you're going to get uneven wear on the tire. Maybe damage the CV joint, said the man. Mom threw Evan a look. Evan didn't know about cars, but mom's question was different. Evan shook his head, barely. No, don't trust him. We'll have our mechanic take a look, said mom, but thank you for pointing that out. She smiled. It wasn't mom's real smile, but the man didn't know that. The man sighed as if they had disappointed him. Suit yourself, that's a nice car. It was a nice car, a Mercedes-Benz SUV. It was one of the last vestiges of their old life. Mom paid for the gas and they got back in the car. What was that about, said Celeste. She kept her voice low, even though the man could not hear them. Why was he saying there's something wrong with the car? You had it checked out before we left California. He probably saw the out of town plates, figured he might make a quick buck, said mom, right Evan? He didn't feel right, said Evan. That's all he knew, usually all he ever knew. The reasons and the motivations, that was beyond his perception. Then why were you so nice to him, asked Celeste, if Evan said he was lying? Mom flipped the turn signal, changed lanes. We're never going to see him again. Why anger him? Put your head down and don't cause trouble. And this has been a preview of The Secret Battle of Evan Powell.